Welcome. Welcome to Dead Air Live. I'm Warren Goldstein Gelb, and I'll be hosting the show this evening. Tonight, we're joined by Eric Weltman, who is the organizing director for CPPAC, Citizens for Participation in Political Action. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. And we'll also be joined later by phone uh, by Joe O'Brien from Mass Voters for Clean Elections, Jeremy Pittman, who's with the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Alliance of Massachusetts, and by Paul Lashley, who is a candidate, a Green Party candidate, in Somerville running against Tim Toomey in the 26th Middlesex District. Tonight's conversation is about the Overthrow Finneran campaign, a campaign launched by CP PACs. And this is a campaign that is running ballot questions, voluntary ballot question in 18 districts, including Paul Lashley and Tim Toomey's contested race, as well as districts in Boston and Cambridge and other districts across the state. They've launched a uh, bumper sticker campaign with hundreds of bumper stickers let's say Overthrow Finneran that have gone out. Um, they have a web page, overthrowfinneran.org. And so, Eric, I guess the first question I might have for you is, if you were a visitor from another state or another country, or for another planet, or another matter. planet, and you came to Massachusetts and saw all, this, all, saw all of this publicity about Overthrow Finneran, you might have the impression that there's some sort of a dictator here in Massachusetts. Um, is and that is that an accurate uh, depiction? And you, you, you might and you, you and you might be uh, you might just might be correct in that assumption. Um, Warren, we, we launched CPPAX launched this campaign in April, uh, OverthrowFinneran.org, the campaign for democracy in the state house, because we felt that there was a crisis of democracy in Massachusetts, and we think that this is a crisis that a lot of people out there, our, our viewers out there, will, will will recognize and be aware of. We have a problem with a, a lack of, of competitive races. Uh, not enough people are running for office. We have a problem with uh, budgets, you know, months and months and months overdue. We have a problem with bills being held up indefinitely in committee and being squelched. And we believe that the cause of that problem, the source of the problem, is the concentration of too much power in the hands of one person. That person, of course, is, is Speaker of the House Tom Finneran, House Speaker Tom Finneran. But how, I mean, the man was elected uh, democratically in Mattapan, right? Mm -hmm. And he was also elected by the, um, by the House itself. Mm -hmm. uh, how did he amass so much power? Mm -hmm. Well, Warren, it, it, it is indeed true, just by way of a little background again, uh, you know, Tom Finneran is a state representative uh, from a district in Mattapan. It also includes uh, parts of, of Milton. And he was, you know, has been elected by, um, by the people of that district and then elected speaker by the other 159 members of the House of Representatives. Um, and we believe his reign as speaker has been one of, uh, throughout his reign as speaker, he has amassed power and suppress democracy. And you know, the question being, you know, how has he amassed so much power and how does he continue to amass so much power? Um, it's through some pretty conventional means, frankly. Uh, you know, rewarding his supporters, uh, a punishing opponents, uh, and just to sort of enumerate that a little bit, um, Representatives who, who back Finneran, state representatives who back Finneran, are richly rewarded. Uh, it, it sometimes may mean an, an additional staff person. It could mean a better office. It could even mean better pay. In fact, um, the number of people in so-called leadership positions under Finneran's reign ha ha has skyrocketed. And these are people who are you know, committee chairs, who are vice chairs or floor whips or other, again, so-called leadership positions, None, number of people who are getting more money, higher pay, and are therefore in, in debt to Finneran has increased uh, tremendously in recent years. The, uh, and by the way, these positions come with an extra $7,500 to $15,000 a year. Um, and the number has increased from 38 in 1995 to 51 today. This is, thir what is 38 and 51, just so we're clear. I'm sorry, so 38 people in these leadership positions. I see. Uh, in 1995, and now it's up to 51. So it's nearly 
nearly one-third of the members of the House of Representatives get more money because they are appointed to these positions. So there's actually a substantial amount of taxpayer money that's, um, that Finneran is spending on, yes. on leaders, and exactly. you're saying that he's rewarding these leaders to be um, allies of it. But what about exactly. the flip side? What about people who oppose him on issues? What are, kinds of consequences do legislators face if they decide to take a stand against Finneran? Those, those, those consequences are, are, are very well known. Um, I mean, again, the you know, flip side, if, you, if you're a friend of Finneran's, you get a nice office. If you're, if you're not a friend of his, you, you get a bad office, a, a basement office. Um, and that's, again, that's commonly known. Um, you get removed from your committee posts. If there's a, a committee that you've been working on for years and maybe something that, you know, is an issue that, you know, one is uh, familiar with or, or enjoys working on, you can get removed from that committee post. Um, and there have been legislators that have even, recently we went through redistricting, and there are legislators who, who, lo who lost their districts. Um, because of, of the, the, the opposition to Finneran. There was a, rep a liberal Republican up in Chelmsford, uh, Representative Clevin, Carol Clevin, who lost her district uh, entirely. So again, that's why we launched the campaign. It's, again, it's overthrowfinneran.org. We do obviously have a website, overthrowfinneran.org, and we encourage people to visit the website to find out about the campaign, order a free bumper sticker, as Warren said, we've been giving away hundreds, if not thousands, of bumper stickers, please visit the website overthrowfinneran.org and, and get involved in the campaign. Well, let's talk a little bit about these um, uh, ballot questions. Um, mm -hmm. Well, first of all, a question, if there's you know, uh, so much opposition to Finneran, if he's such a bad Speaker of the House, mm -hmm. why hasn't the legislature simply risen up and ousted him? It's an interesting question. I mean, we, we do think that dissatisfaction with Finneran is increasing. Uh, there are a substantial number of progressive legislators who are opposed to his rule. Um, number, of, you know, again, a number of progressive Democrats, and there are a number of uh, uh, the Republicans uh, who, interestingly enough, are the ones who helped put him into office in the first place. As Speaker, the Republicans are starting to oppose him. Um, and for example, they uh, opposed his uh, lifting of the term limits on his position uh, last year, last January. So again, you have progressive Democrats. Oh, you wait, have back up, up, back up a second there. Please. Lifting of the term limits on his was there a uh, a limitation on how long he could be right. speaker of the that house? Gets, that's a good question, Warren. That gets back to your earlier question about uh, his amassing power. Um, that was another way of his increasing his power, uh, in January, he engineered the elimination of limits, the limits on the number of years that a representative could serve as a, a speaker. Um, he originally, there had been a limit, uh, I believe, of four terms, so eight years. And he in engineered the elimination of that term, uh, therefore um, garnering the um, title of, of, of speaker for life. And there's an excellent uh, photo uh, I believe it's on, on, on the screen now uh, from the Boston Herald of when he was coronated uh, King Tom or, or, or Speaker for Life. Um, and so that was, again, another way of him uh, amassing more power for himself, becoming Speaker for Life. Um, we, so again, we think that, you know, with these, you know, with our campaign, with these ballot questions, opposition to him is increasing. Um, but it's very, it's very, you know, dangerous to oppose the speaker. I mean, you know, again, for reasons we alluded to. Uh, uh, I mean, he rewards his supporters and he, and, he, and he punishes his enemies. He punishes his enemies. One other point uh, in terms of his reporting, re rewarding his supporters, he also controls a PAC, a political action committee. Um, I believe it's called his uh, Speaker Finneran's uh, Victory Fund or something like that. And Democratic legislators, Democratic representatives, get uh, can get up to five hundred dollars a year uh, from that PAC. Wow. So it's another way of him, you know, doling out um, uh, doling out cash uh, to his friends. If you just joined us uh, on Dead Air Live, we're here with Eric Weltman, and we're discussing who is the um, organizing director of Citizens for Participation in Political Action. 
and were discuss discussing the overthrow Finneran campaign. Part of this campaign, Eric, is uh, ballot questions. And I understand you have mm -hmm. succeeded in gathering signatures to put a ballot question uh, on the, in 18 uh, legislative districts across Massachusetts. Can you talk a little about what's, what is this ballot question and what's the purpose of it? Thank you. Uh, the purpose of it was really to give our interns something to do this summer. No, <laughs> I, obviously kidding. But it was a tremendous amount of work um, gathering the signatures. These are uh, called public policy questions, and they're, they're non-binding. Um, and they require, what is required is to get 200 signatures from, representative, from, from voters within a district to put, a question, to put the question on the ballot. Um, and the question that we put on the ballot um, in these 18 districts, and, I, and I, I will read it, the text is, shall the representative from this district be instructed not to vote for Thomas M. Finneran of Boston for Speaker of the State House of Representatives? And the, the text of the question, more information about it can, again, be on, found on our website, overthrowfinneran.org. Again, that's overthrowfinneran.org. Um, and we are urging people to vote yes. Uh, we are urging people to vote yes on these questions, to uh, send a message in opposition to Finneran as Speaker, and in support of democracy in the State House. So again, we're urging a yes vote. And this question is on the ballot in 18 districts across Massachusetts, uh, including uh, one in, in, in Somerville in the 26 Middlesex District, which again includes parts of, of East Somerville and East Cambridge, as well as several districts in, in Boston. Um, they go up to, there's a question on the ballot in Lawrence, there's one in Dracut, in Salem, in Northampton, in South Hadley. And again, the purpose of these ballot questions is to allow voters to send a message uh, to the legislator, to their representatives in particular, that, um, it, that, that Tom Finneran is, is arrogant, he's undemocratic, and he's too darn powerful, and, it, and it's time for him to go. And so the objective would be, uh, say, in Tim Toomey's district, or maybe it will be Paul Lashley's district after the election, we don't know yet, mm -hmm. um, but that the residents of Cambridge and, and Somerville would vote in favor of this resolution instructing the legislator to, mm -hmm. to essentially to oust Vinner in the next time right. there's a chance to vote. And that is when, when is that next vote? That will be, that will be in January uh, of 2003. So the, 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 the legislative cycle is, is two years. Every two years the, the, you know, the legislators are, uh, re the representatives are, are, are elected. Um, and the session starts in January, and that's when they both elect the speaker, um, and then they uh, determine the rules under which the House, under which the, which the legislature will operate for the following two years. Um, so again, if, if people want to find out actually where these questions are on the ballot, they can go to our website, overthrowfinneran.org. They can also call our office. We have an office in downtown Boston. The number is 617-426-3040. Again, that's 426-3040. And if, again, if people are interested in knowing exactly where these questions are on the ballot, they can call us up. Also, people can and should call us up if they want to get involved. Um, we are looking for uh, you know, opportunities for looking for people to help hand out leaflets and to uh, get out the word uh, about these ballot questions and to encourage people to vote yes, vote yes on, on these ballot questions. So the strategy is your, your way of bringing, of, of bringing down the Speaker of the House mm -hmm. is to put pressure on legislators to vote against Finneran. Mm -hmm. um, but why not take a, a different approach? Um, after all, he's elected from uh, Mattapan. Mm -hmm. um, why not um, focus energy on uh, unseating him there. Mm. What's, the, um, hmm. what's the sort of thinking behind right. the, the approach? Right. That's, a very, that's a very good question and there are two very interesting and I think an instructive answers uh, to that, uh, that question. The first answer, frankly, is, is that it would be difficult if not impossible to unseat him. Uh, and that's for several reasons. First of all, he has a lot of money. Uh, for someone who consistently runs unopposed, 
he raises a heck of a lot of money. Uh, in fact, he just had a, a fundraiser during the height of the budget season at which he raised $100,000. I mean, this is a man who has over half a million dollars in his campaign account. It's pretty hard to run against someone who has over half a million dollars in the campaign account. It's really hard. Second thing is he has um, a lot of political friends that would help him out if he were, if he, if he were run for office. Uh, a lot of pe very powerful political players in, in Boston w would, would back him. Um, so it would be very difficult to unseat him. Um, but the second uh, answer to your question is, I mean, we think that it, w I mean, our, our goal is ultimately to promote democracy in the state house. And we think the best way to do that is not simply to unseat one man, but really to energize the, the entire legislature. I mean, there are 160 reps out there. Uh, and we really want to galvanize the legislature to oppose Finneran. And not only that, I mean, I think one of the things that we, I'd like to, to highlight is that, I mean, there are really two goals of the overthrow of Finneran campaign. One of which, of course, is to unseat Finneran as speaker. Right. The second is to institute rules, reforms that foster open debate, that share authority throughout the legislature, and that promote democracy. And ultimately, the means to do that is for not just the people in one district, you know, Mattapan and Milton, but districts throughout Massachusetts to say to the legislators, look, we want you to really represent us. Um, we, we want you to, to, to stand up for, for our districts. Um, well, let, let's talk about that for a minute. And I mean, we're talking about rules reform now. It's not just the battle to unseat Finneran, who has become, Tom Finneran, who has become sort of the symbol, the way you put it, of, mm -hmm. of undemocratic leadership mm -hmm. in the state. And the cost of that being that um, a lot of bills that might be popular bills are being mm -hmm. held up. Um, but now when we're talking about rules reform, and I think people's eyes sometimes you know, glaze over when you talk about uh, what seems like an esoteric topic, um, can you tell us you know, what kinds of reforms would be needed and what difference they make? Mm -hmm. um, why is it that we need rules reform? Why is this an important issue that voters should really care about? That's, yeah, that, that's a great question. It reminds me. Um, in my organization, CP PAX, is filled with quite a few people who, who are interested in some of these esoteric things. And they often you know, ask, well, Eric, why isn't rules reform you know, more at the forefront of the, you know, of the campaign for democracy in the State House? And I have to say, well, can you imagine a lot of people like going to a website, you know, rulesreform.org, um, you know, or wearing a bumper sticker, putting a bumper sticker on their car, rules reform now. Um, I mean, you're right, it's, it's frankly not that sexy a topic. Um, but it is, it is very important if we're not to get a, 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 another Finneran. Um, oh, are we joined by a, by a caller? Hello. I think we have our, our first guest, um, who is uh, Joe O'Brien from Mass Voters for Clean Elections. Joe, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you quite well. Hey, Joe. Hey. Hi, Eric. How are you? I'm doing all right. <laughs> so the election's getting any cleaner out there? It's not getting any clearer, but I was, I was watching a tribute for, to Minnesota Senator Paul Wellstone, who we we're all very saddened at his um. passing, and, but a great champion of campaign finance reform and a real champion of progressive causes. So. Mm. Mm. Uh, I hope you probably probably said something about his passing tonight, but I thought I had to throw that in there as well myself. I appreciate it. We, we, we didn't, but Paul Wallstone, um, you know, I actually had the pleasure of meeting him several times. He was really a, a, a beautiful, beautiful person, and his death was a tremendous blow. Um, he certainly was. So, but on the clean elections, I, I know an issue of, campaign finance reform issue that Paul cared about greatly and and so 
Well, why don't you give us a, I mean, we're talking, of course, uh, Joe, and this is Warren Goldstein-Gelb, um, and I'm uh, moderating the panel here tonight. Um, we're talking, of course, about the overthrow Finneran campaign, but before we, we sort of connect clean elections to Finneran, which I, I understand there's a pretty easy connection <laughs> to be made, why don't you just tell us for a moment about uh, uh, what you're working on right now with clean elections, what's happening, and uh, what can the voters expect to see and uh, vote on on November 5th? Well, as you know, the voters of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts passed the Clean Elections Law in 1998 by a two-thirds majority. Mm. And the voters voted for the Clean Elections Law because they wanted to limit the influence of big money on politics, to create more competition for public office, and to bring real reform to Beacon Hill. Unfortunately, House Speaker Tom Finneran and the Beacon Hill insiders have refused to allow the Clean Elections Law to work. And now, with the help of more than $200,000 of corporate money from mm -hmm. corporations such as Fidelity, John Hancock, and many others, Speaker Finneran and his allies are trying to confuse and deceive voters into voting against the reforms that they passed in 1998. What they're doing is they put this question three on the ballot, which asks voters if they want taxpayer money used to fund political campaigns in Massachusetts. Mm. And they're going to use the outcome of this question in order to repeal clean elections. Now, what's wrong with this question is that it doesn't talk about spending limits, fundraising limits, a qualification process that candidates have to go through, and all the features that make the Clean Elections Law, the Clean Elections Law. So it's a pretty distorted question. And exactly. And basically, the question is designed to get a no vote. And Speaker Fenner and his allies, who have refused to listen to the will of the people and the voters, you know, two-thirds of the people in the Congress who voted for the Clean Elections Law, to the hundreds of thousands of people that signed petitions, that worked on the issue, that supported the issue, he's refused to listen to them for the past four years, and now... Once he's designed a question that's designed to fail, he says he now wants to listen to the speakers, I'm sorry, to the, the voters of the cop. Well, so we want to, but we want a yes, we're urging a yes vote, right? That's correct, Eric, and I think it's important that people should send a, a very strong, clear message to Speaker Finneran and his corporate friends on Beacon Hill that we want real reform and that we're going to vote yes because we want to send a message to the Speaker Finneran that reform is a priority for the people of Massachusetts. And although it's a deceptively worded question, we still are encouraging people to vote yes on, mm -hmm. on question three. But let's make no, let's not kid ourselves. This question, and uh, you're going to be seeing thousands of dollars of corporate money spent on ads this next several weeks or mm -hmm. 10 days or so, and it's going to be trying to deceive voters. We're not going to, we may not win this fight, but we're going to keep the fight going for clean elections. So we encourage people to vote yes but also to keep engaged and keep yeah. fighting for clean elections and keep challenging Tom Finneran. Yeah. Joe, you have, what's your web, you have a website, right? That's right. We've got a website, www.massvoters.org. We've also got a site, savecleanelections.com. I'm sorry, savecleanelections.org. Mm. So you can visit those sites for more information as well. So let's take a, a step back a little bit for some of our um, uh, viewers who may not you know, we've been talking about, and Eric gave some examples of, of what he framed as a misuse of power, essentially. Um, can you give us some examples going back to, uh, as you mentioned, there was a, 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 a referendum in 1998. Yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the speaker, um, because he's been the central villain in this, this effort to deceive the voters and to block the will of the voters in implementing clean elections and campaign finance reform. In 1998, as I said, the, the voters approved the Clean Elections Law. And despite the fact that more than two-thirds of the voters approved the law, Speaker Finneran has been on a personal crusade to block mm. the implementation of the law. Mm. He first tried to fight against placing money from the state budget the two years after it was passed into the special fund to fund the Clean Elections Law. Mm -hmm. And then this past year, when the law was supposed to go live, as we would say, or huh. was supposed to be the first year of implementation, Speaker Finneran, even though the money, more than $23 million had been set aside 
to fund the law, to pay for candidates and campaigns that qualified under the, under the law, he refused to actually release and spend the money. Mm. So advocates, joined by groups you know, such as Eric's and other progressive groups around the state, mobilized and went to court and fought to try to get the courts to force Speaker Finneran to release funding for the Clean Elections Law. And unbelievably, Speaker Finneran had continued to refuse to do so. And mm. the advocates got a ruling, led by mass voters and others, got a ruling from the state Supreme Court at the beginning of this year that demanded, from the state Supreme Court, demanded that Tom Finner in the House either fund the law and, or repeal the law. Is this when we Amazingly started? Amazingly so, Speaker Finner defied the state Supreme Court and refused to do either. He did not have the courage to, to try to repeal the law, but he actually just simply refused to fund the law, despite the state Supreme mm. Court ordering him to do so. It was unprecedented in this country that right. a House Speaker would defy the sta a state Supreme Court Joe, order to take action to fund a law that was passed by the voters. Joe, why does Finneran fear clean elections? I mean, how would the clean elections law, you know, threaten him or undermine his power or authority? Or why is he scared of clean elections? There's two words, Eric, of why... Speaker Finneran and some of these Beacon Hill insiders. Remember, Joe, this is a family show. Fear, fear, you know, that's right, family show. Fear clean elections. And the two words are competition and accountability. In Maine and Arizona, they have a fully functioning clean elections law in these states, similar to the law that the voters passed in 1998. Mm. But those states, those states don't have a Speaker Finneran although there's many folks in those states who don't necessarily like the law, the legislature in the states have accepted Wait, the law. Wait, Joe, are you saying not every state has a Speaker Finneran? I'm sorry. They, the fortune of those states don't have a Speaker Finneran. <laughs> My God, what uh, do they have? <laughs> um, and they've allowed, so in Maine and Arizona, they actually have a law that's working. And uh -huh. what's happened in those two states, as there's been a rise in the number of competitive seats, I mean, there's been greater competition for state legislative seats, and as a result of that rise in competition, there's greater accountability. And what do we mean by that? Well, for example, let's look at Massachusetts. We have the second least competitive state legislature in the country. Let me say that again. We're 49 out of 50 states. Only South Carolina hmm. does worse in having the number of competitive races. So that's, a I, that's a very important point. I appreciate you emphasizing three, that. Right. More than three-quarters of the state legislative members in our current legislature, will not have a major party opponent mm. in the general election, and almost 60% have no opponent at all. So the amazing thing is that we have these very uncompetitive legislative races, and as a result, we have less accountability, because when voters don't have choices, they can't hold their state legislative members accountable. You know, there's a, a great way to sum this up as far as this competition and accountability, folks, and that is... You know, democracy, our democracy, is fundamentally about choices. Mm -hmm. That's what makes the democracy a democracy. We get to go to the ballot and choose the people we want to represent us. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, here in Massachusetts, we have very few choices. Mm -hmm. So, Joe, this is all about Finneran preserving his own power. Well, that's right, because Tom Finneran likes the system. He keeps the same people coming back year after year who he can manipulate. And as I like to say, he's got, the, he's got control over the three P's. You know what the three P's are, and I know this is a family show. It's perks, perks, pay, and pro projects. Perks, pay, and projects. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you're friends with Speaker Finneran, you get to become a chairperson of a committee, and you get more pay. Yeah. And if you're a friend of Speaker Finneran, you get more perks. You get the special the better offices, the, be the larger staff. Mm -hmm. And if you're friends with Speaker Finneran, you get the three third P, which is programs and projects, or programs yeah. or projects, for your district. You know, you get that extra fire truck or that small extra grant for more cops or for other... Well, how about a courthouse? So important. So occasionally get a controls it. Is that occasionally you get a courthouse, Joe. Well, let me, let, me ask you both, let me ask you both a question because, I mean, isn't playing the devil's advocate for a minute here, isn't this the way that politics always works? Hasn't it always worked this way in Massachusetts? And if it hasn't um, here or elsewhere, I mean, how else, uh, how else might it have worked? Power, you know, politics is, is fundamentally about power. 
that, that's certainly true. But what happens in a state when you have such low levels of competition that the power becomes concentrated in a, in a smaller and smaller number of individuals? Mm. Because you don't have turnover. You don't have new voices and new, new mm. people that come in to challenge the system, to challenge the current leadership, to try to, you know, to create alternative structures or al- alternative leadership structures. You know, for example, in, in states, for example, that have things like term limits, they, mm. have, they have turnover, for example. They have more, mm. more, they have changes in the leadership on a regular basis. Or in states that have highly competitive elections, they have changes and, and different coups and different, mm. different groups come in in and out of power. So at least there's a healthy competition that exists. Right. That doesn't exist here in Massachusetts. So, so voters can send a message in support of reform by voting yes on, on question three, which is a clean elections question, uh, d- written by Speaker Finneran. Mass Voters for Clean Election has also put sever- their own clean elections question on the ballot in some districts. Is that correct, Joe? And that's correct. And, and, and Actually, pe- people should vote first, yes on that as well. Cambridge, which I know a lot of your viewership comes from. Mm. Um, we have actually, what we did is when back this summer, we launched something called the Campaign for a Responsive Legislature. Mm-hmm. And the idea was that we wanted to have a, more folks to come into this new legislature to educate voters about where the candidates stood on clean elections and the, to help educate voters so they would hopefully choose to elect more candidates who support clean elections. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, we also wanted to keep this issue of clean elections out there in the public eyes. So what we've done is we've put on a fairly worded question on the ballot, much like Eric group has done with his Speaker Finneran question, in 11 districts across the state, and what we did is we chose communities where we wanted to go out and get a representative sample of people to get a sense that they still support clean elections. And our question is fundamentally different. It asks the voters in those communities whether they want their state representative to fully implement and fund the clean elections law that provides a set amount of public financing for candidates who agree to strict fundraising and spending limitations. And see, we call this a much more fairly worded question. It asks so, about the clean elections law and, and provides you with the elements. And that's going to appear in 11 communities across the state, including parts of Cambridge and Somerville. Joe, that's, that's great, and thank you for joining us uh, tonight. Um, and good luck, with, um, good luck with question three. Well, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for having us on. And, Please remember to send a message for real reform by voting yes on question three and voting yes in your local ballot question. And mm. we also encourage people to vote for the question that Eric and his group have put on. It's a strong message that we no longer would like to have Speaker Finneran as the leader of our, our democratically elected state legislature. So thanks for having us on. Thanks. Thank thanks, you. Joe. And so, again, I would suggest, you know, people should find out more about, you know, Joe's campaign. Uh, they have you know, there's two websites, massvoters.org and savecleanelections.org. And please do uh, you know, help overthrow Finneran by supporting the clean elections law. Please vote yes on three and vote yes on the clean elections questions as well as yes on our overthrow Finneran ballot questions. So we have another guest, um, Jeremy Pittman, should be on the line now from the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Trans- Transgender Alliance of Massachusetts. And let's see if he's there. He's not there. Um, okay, Jeremy so, should be calling in, in a moment. Um, we had started to talk, I believe, about some of the reforms from the, some of the. I think we might have him here. Oh, let's try it. Jeremy, are you there? Jeremy? Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't think he's there. Hello? Hi, ah, Jeremy. Yes, he is there. Hi, Jeremy. This is Warren Goldstein-Gelb. You're on Dead Air Live, and Eric Weltman is here. Great. As Hi, well. Warren. Eric. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. So, um, as you know, we're doing a show about the Overthrow Finneran campaign, and so one question might be for you is, why would someone from the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and tran- Transgender Alliance of Massachusetts be interested or involved in overthrowing Tom Finneran as Speaker of the House? Well, that's a pretty, pretty easy answer, I think. Tom Finneran has not been our friend over the years, and he has worked steadfastly to block any advances for gay rights in the legislature. Uh, we've seen this over and over again with uh, our 
a very modest bill that's been uh, in the legislature and it's now passed the Senate three times and has mm. never come to a vote in any committee or on the House floor. So do you believe that you have support among the members of the House or the members of the committees that it is? We do. We believe that if the bill came to the floor of the House, it would win approval, as it has won approval in the Senate for the past uh, three legislative sessions. I mean, this is, you know, you know one of the, the hallmarks of, of Finneran's you know, reign as speaker is that he, he has tight control over the legislative process. Again, as you know, Jeremy you know, alluded to, I mean, he really does maintain strict control over exactly what bills are voted on. Uh, Jeremy referred to a gay rights bill, but there's many others that bills have passed the Senate but never come to a vote in the House because of Finneran. So what is the um, alliance doing, if anything, uh, specifically about Finneran? Are you actively involved in this campaign? Are your members involved in this overthrow of Finneran campaign? We have been involved with the overthrow of Finneran campaign, and uh, our members uh, at a meeting last week where we voted on endorsements for the general election endorsed the overthrow of Finneran ballot initiative that's on the, on the, district, on the ballot in 18 districts across the state and uh, we'll be working to send out uh, releases and make sure that everyone knows that uh, we've come down and taken a stand on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also uh, collaborated CP Paxton Alliance uh, on several rallies over the last couple of years um, come the rally, Rallies for Democracy. That's right and we have those rallies at the State House. We work with a broad array of organizations that uh, are facing the legislative logjam put in place by Tom Finneran and so at times when at near the end of each legislative session there's usually a whole host of bills that are waiting for action in the house bills that have been approved in the senate uh, often for the second or third time as was the case with the domestic partnership bill this year and have not seen any action in the house and so drawing attention to those bills at the end of the legislative session and trying to get some movement uh, so we've worked with uh, the Overthrow Finnering campaign and CP PACs on those rallies for the past uh, two legislative sessions. Maybe we should give the viewers a sense of what kinds of bills, what kind of content in those bills Finneran is holding up. What are you trying to, uh, what kind of legislation are you trying to get passed? Sure. Well, with the domestic partnership bill, this is a bill that would provide health insurance to the domestic partners of state employees and to the children of those domestic partners. And it would allow cities and other uh, municip and municipalities throughout the state to provide those same benefits to their employees, which they currently do not have the ability to do under existing state law. Jeremy, this is not exactly radical reform here, right? We're talking about providing health insurance to That's people. That's exactly right. Health uh, insurance to you know, the partners of, of gay and lesbian workers, uh, state workers, and municipal workers is not tremendously radical. There are uh, a number of other states, 10 states right now, that do this. You know, we know that other states have moved beyond us in the, in the area of gay rights. We have civil unions in Vermont. Um, there's serious talk about civil unions in several other states. And, you know, we have not been progressing very far. So this is not a radical reform, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. We're talking about, you know, expanding health insurance benefits by, at, at the margins for, uh, for people who need them. And yet, Finneran is not even allowing this bill to come up for a vote. I mean, again, folks, we're not talking about a legislator who himself, say, is against these uh, you know, rights and is uh, not voting for them. This is a man, Tom Finneran, who's not even allowing the bill to be voted on at all, even though it's passed in the Senate three times in three successive legislative sessions. It is passed in the Senate. It enjoys strong support in the House. It's a common sense bill to provide health care, expand access to health care, and yet Finneran is not allowing it to come to a vote. Again, folks, for folks who may have just joined in, we have a website, overthrowfinneran.org. Again, it's overthrowfinneran.org. You can visit the site, find out more about the campaign and how you can get involved. Um, Jeremy, what are some of the other bills that we dealt with um, during the last rally? Um, do you remember some of those? Uh, sure. There was, there was a bill about uh, gender equity and insurance, mm. which has um, been a bill that's, that's been bandied throughout the State House for many, many years mm. and passed the Senate. And this is just simply a bill to require the insurance policies to be written in accord with the, uh, with the state's prohibition against discrimination on the basis of gender. Mm. So uh, that makes perfect sense and has broad support. Um, there are there were uh, bills about affordable housing. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, also uh, about the the environmental um, the environmental enforcement bill, which is simply a bill that uh, would require the state's Department of the Environment to enforce l legislation that's already passed. Yeah. I mean, one of the great things about these rallies is that they they've you know you know, engage a number of constituencies, again, the, you know, the environmental community, the affordable housing community. I mean, I think that's a particularly striking thing that we have an affordable housing crisis here in Somerville and in Cambridge and Boston, throughout Massachusetts, and yet Finneran has not allowed a bill that would ex promote affordable housing, has not allowed it to come to a vote. Uh, an organization, the uh, Mass Alliance of HUD Tenants, a large statewide organization has advocated this bill for many years. Uh, even they even last year collected uh, petitions in Finneran's own district, mm. requesting that the bill come to a vote. Yet he has not allowed this bill again to expand affordable housing opportunities in Massachusetts. Finneran has not allowed it to come to a vote. Now I want to get a little bit of a flavor of the style about how he uh, defeats these m these bills. In the case of the uh, the gay rights bills, does he actively, Jeremy? Does he does he come out and speak against them vocally, or does he just simply uh, not take action? How does he actually go about killing them? Well, he he simply doesn't take action, and and the way he can do this is uh, as speaker, he has um, concentrated considerable amounts of authority into his own person mm -hmm. and into the office of the speaker of the house, and uh, and as such, he appoints all of the committee chairs. Mm -hmm. And the committee chairs, uh, in, in return for, for serving as committee chairs, receive additional pay. So uh, he's hand, you know, he, he appoints not only office holders, but uh, you know, recipients of additional pay and, uh, and, and uses strong tactics, uh, which many would consider to be you know, as, as strong as retribution against those who disagree with him or who, uh, who dare to, to do uh, anything other than his will. And so, you know, we see that, that no vote can be taken in any committee without his approval mm -hmm. in advance. Right. The legislation just doesn't move uh, unless Tom Finneran believes that it should. Now, Eric, and maybe Jeremy, I don't know if you have an answer to this, but from CPPAC's point of view, I mean, is there another model out there? Wouldn't you expect the Speaker of the House to appoint committee chairs? Um, are there any other ways of doing things in terms of the rules of the House that might I, be I th better? I think that, you know, one way I, I've been thinking about it is that you know the job of a, of a, of a, of a leader or, or speaker is perhaps to make sure that the trains run on time. It's not to decide whether or not they leave the station in the first place. Mm. Um, I mean, I think that there are, you know, a number of reforms that we've talked about, you know, uh, you know in addition, again, to removing the, the, the speaker, we would like to see reforms put in place. So that there's not another Finneran. We would like to see the term limits put back in place, the, the, the limits on the number of uh, terms that, uh, fin uh, that a speaker can serve. Um, another reform we've talked about is having committees elect their own chairs. Uh, and as Jeremy pointed out, uh, it was a very, you know, very good point, you know, Finneran does appoint all of these you know, committee chairs. Wouldn't it be great if committees elected their own chairs? So there are a number of, of reforms you know, we heard earlier from Joe about the clean elections law um, that would create more competitive races. So there are ways that we can uh, promote democracy here in Massachusetts. Uh, the number of forms that can create democracy in the state house. Um, you know, Jeremy, having the, the gay rights community, you know, add its its voice to this campaign, I think has been very uh, is you know is very important, very very powerful. We we certainly hope it will be at the at the elections and. Uh, and beyond, as people think about who is uh, who they should support as speaker next year. Great, mm -hmm. Jeremy. Thank you for for joining us, and thank good you luck. for having me. Great. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I would encourage people to visit our website, uh, overthrowfinneran.org. Again, that's www.overthrowfinneran.org to find out more about our our, our 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 campaign. In case you joined us late, we're speaking with Eric Weltman, who's the organizing director at CPPAC, Citizens for Participation in Political Action. Um, and we're talking about the Overthrow Finneran campaign. Um, and I know you worked really, really hard to get these issues on the ballot. Um, and one of the places that the issue is on the ballot is in the 26th district, 
Middlesex district, mm -hmm. where Paul Lashley is running for on the Green Party um, ticket against mm -hmm. Tim Toomey. And I think we've got him on the line right now. Oh, so okay. why don't we see if we do? Paul, are you there? Hello. 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 Paul, this is Warren Goldstein Gelb. And this is Eric Waltman. And you're on Dead Air Live. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mr. Wellman, this is Paul Lachelier calling, the uh, Green Party candidate running for state representative in East Somerville. Welcome. And I understand that you have a, uh, the ballot question um, about uh, overthrowing Finneran is on the, uh, the ballot there. Right. Um, I guess one, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, the, the, the questions on the, uh, on the ballot, uh, I believe it's either question four or five. Um, in East Somerville, um, and uh, I think it's the only area in Somerville which has this question posed. Okay, and the district also covers parts of Cambridge as well, for our viewers who will be uh, watching uh, the show in exactly. Cambridge? Exactly. This, co this covers um, eastern parts of Cambridge as well, so uh, anybody who lives in Inman Square going forth eastward, uh, as well as in um, uh, any, anywhere north of Main Street, essentially, in, in Cambridge. So the $99,000 question, Paul, is if the voters... Uh, hey, he's a clean elections candidate. He can't accept that $99,000. Okay. All right. <laughs> then the, it's, it's more like a $99 question, the, the zero, The zero dollar, right, the $99. <laughs> if the voters... dollars is acceptable. If the voters in East Cambridge, uh, East Somerville and Cambridge vote uh, overwhelmingly to instruct the next legislator to vote against Tom Finneran as Speaker of the House, will you follow their mandate? And why? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, you know, um, yes. I mean, the, the, I've run a very explicitly um, uh, anti finneran campaign. Uh, I was endorsed by, this, by Citizens for Participation in Political Action, or CPPACs, which is pushing this forward. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm, uh, I, you know, and I'm running, I'm running this campaign largely to try to uh, push forward democracy against uh, one of. Um, Finneran's most loyal uh, cronies, his name is Tim Toomey, he's been a longtime state representative. And for, for Somerville residents, what's relevant here is that uh, Tim Toomey is a Cambridge resident, but has um, for the last 10 years been representing East Somerville, and by many accounts uh, not been doing a particularly good job of representing Somerville residents. So this is the first time since 1994 that people in East Cambridge will have the opportunity to vote for a Somerville resident to be their Somerville representative. And has, has well, isn't that special? Uh, has, you're also a, a clean elections candidate. We had Joe O'Brien on the show a moment ago talking about clean elections. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you want he wanted to say some something about my uh, about the uh, the clean elections and? Well, I think that one of the, you know we talked about. Joe talked about why Finneran is scared of clean elections, and mm -hmm. I think to me the, perhaps the most you know interesting point is that you know clean elections is intended to promote competitive races, and mm -hmm. that's something that Finneran fears. Yeah. Is you know, I mean, I, I can tell you from uh, well from my own personal experience that I would probably not have run, uh, and I certainly wouldn't have been able to run a serious challenge to one of Finneran's cronies um, without the clean elections law. And, uh, and that I, I think what, what these two points that the clean elections law does are, in fact, you know, very valid. Um, the law does increase competition. I mean, in my, you know, it, it, and just as I noted, um, uh, this, this competition wouldn't have happened. Uh, Tim Toomey would have continued to be reelected unopposed if, um, if it weren't for the clean elections law in this case. And uh, above, above and beyond that, the important point um, is that the law is intended to try to reduce the influence of money on elections. Now, the way this happens is essentially that when I went out and uh, door knocked to, um, to seek contributions from voters, all I had to do uh, was ask for uh, contributions of 5 to $100. Now, it's a, the challenge is, and the, be the beauty of the clean elections law, is that it pushes candidates to ask for small contributions from many individuals, rather than the usual route in politics, which is for candidates to go out and get large contributions from a few individuals. Mm -hmm. That's the important contrast. The law pushes candidates to go out and speak to citizens, and, and, and it makes 
uh, uh, connecting with citizens both an imperative and an affordable one for the citizen themselves. And yet some, Finneran and others, have made the argument that, well, then we're going to have all of these, you know, hundreds of candidates running who, have, who aren't really serious about office, um, elected office, and yet not so many of the Green Party candidates actually were able to reach the threshold, as you did, right. um, to, to right. be able to run a campaign, a clean elections campaign. How hard was it for you to actually be able to get that many contributions? Right. Uh, it's not easy, uh, nor is it intended to be, um, I, you know, I think 200, the, the, the requirement for state representatives is 200 contributions from individuals, from voters in your district of 5 to $100. And if you're a Green Party candidate, um, well, you can actually collect those from, from, all, uh, uh, from people from all parties or, or independents. But um, uh, it is a challenge, I, particularly if you, I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody unless you're an entrenched politician who's been, who's been in office for a long time, who's got uh, at least 200 friends that live in the immediate area that mm -hmm. are willing to give uh, five to $100. I just, you know, and so the point is you have to go to speak to, to people um, you don't know. And this is, I think, the beauty of, of, of good grassroots democratic politics is that it forces people to get out and talk to people they've never talked to before. Now well, you, um, sorry, Eric, just one more. Um, to, in fairness to Tim Toomey, um, you, you made a pledge just now on the air saying that if you were elected and the voters voted um, to uh, have the legislator vote against Tom Finneran, uh, you would do that. Has, uh, has Tim Toomey made uh, a similar pledge? No, in fact, I, um, I just heard from uh, the, the editor of the Somerville Journal um, mm. That uh, who interviewed uh, Tim Toomey just earlier today for a story that they're doing on these ballot questions, and uh, he told me that uh, he asked Tim Toomey, "What is your position uh, on this? If if this Finneran question were passed, would you abide by it?" And Toomey, Toomey um, categorically said, "No, I would not. I would uh, vote for Tom Finneran as Speaker of the House." Uh, and he's obviously not going to follow the will of the people. He's demonstrated that um, on clean elections, if it's passed, uh, because um, uh, because he's voted consistently against it, and he's very explicitly opposed to the clean elections law. So, Paul, what is this in general? The significance of your campaign to the overthrow Finneran effort? Uh, I, I think it's part of a, uh, a larger effort. Um, you know, I think that the, the, the bottom line and the, the large word here is democracy with a small d, and that democracy, uh, if, if we're serious about it, has to be something we invest in and something we, we address on a variety of fronts. And one way we obviously have been going about doing this is through these uh, ballot initiatives, uh, these ballot questions, rather, but uh, uh, another way is, is to, is to um, challenge um, some of Tom Finneran's cronies, because Tom Finneran doesn't have any power unless he has cronies to do his bidding. And Toomey is one of Finneran's top right. leaders, and, is in well, yeah, Finneran's and, leadership. And, and, you know, that's, it's, it's, and that's very concretely uh, evidenced by the fact that Tim Toomey voted first to extend uh, Tom Finneran's uh, term and then voted to remove uh, term limits on Tom Finneran altogether, but also by the fact that you can't become a chair of a committee in the State House without being uh, close to Tom Finneran because you, Tom Finneran uses uh, um, his, his, his power to allocate um, uh, you know, chairmanships of committees mm. to, his, to his crony. Great. So the point is, you know, Tim Toomey is clearly an ally of, uh, of Tom Finneran, and, and and the, the larger point for people who believe that we should have democracy, that we should have an open system, and that, in fact, you know, uh, uh, legislators should have a say in decision, a real say in decision-making, is that we have to start voting for change. We have to start Great. voting for clean elections. Paul, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we, I'm sorry, we're running out of time. Um, yep. So we're going to. Thank you. Cut you Thank you very much for joining us. Right. Yeah, so, you're welcome. And good luck. My pleasure. Good luck with your campaign. So, in other words, a, a, a Paul, a, excuse me, a vote for Paul Lashley, in essence, is a vote against Tom Finneran. Uh, by voting for Lashley, you're voting against Finneran because you're voting for someone who's opposing a member of Finneran's leadership team, uh, aka uh, Tim Toomey.
Great. So we just spoke with, with three people who said very similar things from very different perspectives. I, I, I coached uh. them. <laughs> I'm sure I, I you coached did. them before. <laughs> and in case you're joining us here at the end of Dead Air Live, our hour is, is almost up. Uh, we've been speaking with Eric Weltman, who is the uh, 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 policy organizing director. Sorry, Eric. Something like I just that. gave you a new title hmm. um, for CPPACs and is leading the overthrow uh, Finneran effort. And again, um, we urge people to visit our website, overthrowfinneran.org. Again, that's overthrowfinneran.org. We encourage people to get on the site, uh, order bumper stickers, uh, sign up for our email list, make a contribution, uh, and get involved in the campaign. Great. Well, Eric, I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Dead Air Live. And to the viewers at home, if you're interested in returning democracy to the state house, as, as you would say, then you might want to look at overthrowfinneran.org. And again, thanks for joining us.